Hey, Ethan here again with Keelan. Hello, I'm Keelan. I'm a uh, master's student at Dalhousie University. I'm studying uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, today, in this final part of this video series, we're going to be combining all the knowledge we've learned in the previous episodes and compressing it all into one final product, which is our robot. So stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna be building this robot you see here. You guys have this manual with you, so you guys can follow along with us. Let's get started. So right now we're just following the instructions. We're about to start with the building of the frame. And so let's, let's put some bolts in. As you can see, it's a slow process, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. As you can see, we've, we've started to assemble the robot. Um, for the moment, we'll uh, continue to assemble it and we'll catch you back when we have the robot further, uh, further along. So we, uh, we've spent the last uh, couple hours putting this together. Um, right now we're on step 7.1. Um, depending on how experienced you are with building robots or other kits, it may take you faster or slower, maybe three to five hours. Sweet, let's put the, the final board on and plug everything in. All right, so we wanna put this like this. Wire, wire management is important. Yes, sir. Let's put it on these bolts. Sweet. Now we got our main controller board on, so let's plug in the motors. Should be pretty clear in the instructions how to do this. So if we want this motor, it can be motor one. So let's plug it in. And then this motor, this motor two. We can plug in the encoders. You want to wire manage this? What? Just shuffle them in there, I guess. Yep. <laughs> I can, you can probably, we can probably pull it through too. Yeah, that pulling through it works. We're just, we're just pulling some of the wires through just to make it more organized and so there's not all this spaghetti sticking out. Loose wires, if you're, if they get pulled, you don't want to be have them hanging out just in case you're running around an obstacle where they might get pulled out and then your robot loses power and summer all of its wheels and it won't know it's lost power. Uh, this is the uh, Bluetooth communication board. It allows uh, connecting the main boards o uh, over Bluetooth to um, whatever device you're using to control it. Now let's plug in the switch. This switch applies power to the main board and connects up to the battery connector. So it's, it's always required to put a switch on just in case your robot runs away from you. Now we're gonna apply power to the Bluetooth module. So with this, this cable here, we can plug into the, the ports above the where the switch was plugged in and then into the Bluetooth board. Then there's another cable that comes with it, which is meant for sending data between the Bluetooth module and the main controller board. All right, so here's what we've got to so far. Um, it's not perfect, but a couple, a couple more minutes and it could be just clean up the wires and make it all look nice and pretty. At this point, there's just a few steps remaining in the process. Uh, there is the line sensor, a uh, ultrasound sensor, and another servo that actuates a small arm. Uh, it would be easy at this point just to complete it, but for the sake of time, we wanted to show you a mostly complete product, one that should give you an idea of what, this, what the robot's meant to look like. This gives you guys a good idea of what your robot from the kit should look like, but in when building robots for the competitions, you have to make modifications and change lots of things. So let me show you one of the robots that I built to kind of give you a good idea of what a robot ta tailored to a competition looks like. 
Okay, so these are the robots I built for my second year of competing. Um, as you can see, they don't look exactly like the kit, but there's a lot of fundamentals that were built up from my first year of competing where we used the kit. For, and we still even use components from the kit here, as you can see for the driving aspect. Here are the omnidirectional wheels that you can see here. Um, and there's some t uh, kit components right here to attach those wheels to the actual robot. And here are the motors that came with this robot, which are really good for high torque movement. And you can kind of regulate the speed, which is really nice for fine control. Here you can see all the purple parts are 3D printed. And this is what I was talking about, about going, taking it beyond the kit and really modeling things in three dimensional space before you build them. Both of these are fully modeled in 3D space before we even started building them. And so when I went to build them, I just made a cut sheet of all these pieces of plywood that I needed to cut out or all the 3D prints I needed to print and all the tubing lengths and sizes. So we just went on Amazon and bought everything. So the design choices made for these robots was based around a course which involved two competing teams, which each had their individual sides to the course. And there were these foam golf balls that needed to be picked up and then somehow transported to the other side without the robot physically going to the other side. So we instantly thought of Nerf guns that shoot these foam balls. And as you can see, this is pretty much a Nerf gun. If you, if you think about it, there's a, something that feeds the balls into this chamber, which then goes, shoots through these flywheels, which propels the balls forward. On the course, there were these little baskets that held the ball, which allowed the ball to stick up a little bit. So you still had a bit of room to grab them. And so what we thought of is our robot would come up beside the basket and move down. And there's a sticky pad here, which would stick to the balls that were there. Then it would go up, rotate. And then inside here, there's almost like a, a windshield wiper which wipes the balls off of here. You can see it here. And it put the balls into here, which stored all the balls. And then, since this was mounted fixed to the top of this little hill you had to climb to get back up to the starting position, we, we came up the hill and we lined up with this other robot and then opened up this kind of, this gate, which, oh, it, which allowed all the balls inside here to rush out into this, almost like a hopper for the balls. So this was lined up, so it was aimed at the opponent's little fishing net, which would catch the balls and would score us points. And so we just kept doing this. Sometimes we could get all the balls in one go. Sometimes we had to go back down again and they would just shoot the balls into the team's net. And that's how we scored all of our points. So as you can see, it's very focused on the competition itself. As you can see, every decision with building these robots was tailored specifically for the contest description. And that's why reading it over more than like five or 10 times is important by the end of it. So let's see this shooter robot in action. Once you've built your first robot, you'll want to take a step back and test various components about it. Some parts may perform as you expect them to, other parts may not hold up. And you might, you might find that you want to make modifications and redesigns of certain components to improve your robot for the competition. Also, when building your robot and you finally come to the first version being complete, you'll want to analyze if it does what you initially intended it to do and maybe look back at the project description to see if it actually can complete the, the challenges that are, you are facing with the, with the contest. You can make a document that outlines all the strengths and weaknesses of each robot and kind of uh, analyze what you could improve on and see what's already good and see what does the job. And some questions that can help you create this document are, uh, is it safe to use? How well does the design function? 
Were the most suitable materials used? Does the design look good? And finally, how could I have improved my design? And look back upon these the answers to these questions and make a version two, because your first robot you make is not gonna be perfect. So to wrap up this video, we just wanna give you some final advice and things you should really think about when you're building your robot and when you're done your robot. So to start off, I really wanna emphasize on practicing. Practice, practice, practice. If you don't practice enough, you're gonna underperform at the competition, but if you over-practice, I mean, you're gonna be dreaming at controlling your robot. And at that point, you should practice more. Like, we practiced for two weeks straight after school until midnight. It was a long process, but that's what got us far into the competition. And I would highly recommend doing that. Know the ins and outs of your robots. And it also stress tests your robot while you're doing it. So you can kind of do the two at the same time. One thing about the practice stage is it also it'll also give you uh, highlight parts of your robot that you may not be aware of. Problem, maybe a motor. Let's say you had too heavy a robot, and the motor, motor will overheat if you start pushing it too hard. You'll have to know that you need to take a little uh, take it a little slower, so that, or go back and then just change a couple point components in design. One thing that I was experiencing in my competition was all the pressure. There's at least a hundred people in the room, and you're there. Some things might go as not go as planned, so you need to really hyper focus on controlling your robot and just completing the competition. Once you're on the floor there, you're kind of just holding your controller, lots of people watching, just focus. And this comes back to the pra practice aspect. The more you practice, the more you'll just, your muscle memory will kick in and you'll know what to do. Last thing is a practiced, a practiced good plan is better than a great unpracticed plan. It's very easy when you're very easy to get carried away and, try, and want to try something new at the last minute. Well, it can work on rare occasions. More often than not, you'll introduce some problem you haven't foreseen and then you'll have to react to that on the fly, which will probably hurt your performance. That's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you need more details, you can check out our website, Studica's website, or the description box of this YouTube video. Uh, thank you so much, Keelan, for uh, coming in and helping me build the robots. Happy to help. Yep. Thank you for watching. Good luck in the competition. And great. Good luck on the competition. You'll do great. Just practice. <laughs>